Well, good evening. This is Wednesday. We used to call it Wednesday prayer meeting. Last Wednesday, perhaps some of you joined me as I was at the church and just had a time of prayer. You know, sometimes we do more talking to each other about God rather than talking to God about each other and our situations. We talk to each other about our situations rather than talking to God. And um, I don't know. I think that sometimes we don't really see the significance and importance of praying. I remember back in Wichita Falls, Texas, I was on staff of a church and the Lord was leading me to do something that was going to take a lot of faith. It was, it seemed to be extremely risky. And I was actually risking not only myself, but my family. And I remember just thinking about that and, and the, the difficulty of the decision that I felt God was leading me to, to take. And I began to say, Lord, I need your strength. I need, uh, it's, you know, a word from you in a special way. And through my study and prayer time, I felt led to read the Gospel of Luke and ask the Lord to show me verses that I would find in Luke that he wanted me to memorize. You know, it's like, Lord, show me some special scriptures that I need to remember, that I need to focus on. And I remember I began with the first chapter and I read some verses and it was good, but nothing stood out yet. And then I read further and got into chapter two Yet still, nothing really stood out. And, you know, when you're listening to the Lord, there's times that you know that God impresses on your heart. And, you know, you know that it's him. I had not sensed that. And then I got into chapter three and um, some good. And then chapter four, when Jesus was facing Satan and still nothing. And I remember sitting in my office thinking, did I pray the wrong prayer? Uh, and you know, sometimes you, you wonder, have you said the right thing? Am I just basically, you know, asking something that God's not going to do? Well, I remember just sensing that, no, I'm going to keep reading because I've asked the Lord to do this. And until he shows me a verse of scripture to really, you know, that is, this is for me to really think about. I'm just going to wait on him. And so I remember in chapter five, I got down to a verse, chapter five, verse 16. And this is what it says. But he himself would often slip away to the wilderness and pray. Now I can tell you there is something special that began to move me about that verse. Luke was writing a record of the things that had happened in consecutive order, but he makes a statement that seemed to be especially emphatic. He himself would pray. It was almost like Jesus is the one with the words of power. Jesus is the most spiritual man that I've ever seen. He, he knows everything. He speaks and people are amazed at him. Why would he need to pray? Oh, I could assume he would pray a little bit here and a little bit there. Everybody that's a spiritual leader would do that. But here it says he would often. So this is something that Jesus did a lot. You would see him walk out the door and somebody would say, he's going back again. Where's he going? And they would perhaps follow him and watch him. And they'd watch him go down the street out into the wilderness. Jesus would be in the wilderness. He would often slip away to the wilderness to pray. Obviously, he's alone. And that grabbed me. And it was as though the Lord was grabbing me, saying, Shelby, if you are going to find the strength that you're going to need from me, 
you you will need to make prayer a cornerstone in your life. Do we really pray? Do what would be said about us? When do we stop and pray? Most prayer meetings I've seen at church are usually the pastor speaking for 30 minutes or so of a Bible study. And then we'll have 10, maybe even 15 minutes of people making their requests. And then somebody will pray, usually less than three minutes. And then we all welcome or, you know, shake hands and how you doing, pat each other on the back and we leave. To me, a prayer meeting is when you stop and you take time to just talk with God. That's what I want to do this evening again. I think if we are really going to understand 2 Chronicles 7, 14, where God says, if, if things happen to a land and the plagues come and problems come upon a nation, he says, if my people will humble themselves and pray, and I think if we're going to really get serious about praying, it's going to be more than just, Lord, please help us with this and that, and then we're done. Would you join me? Would you consider the importance that if the Lord said, if the Lord would pray often by himself, how important is it for you and I to pray? So that's what we're going to do. We are going to talk with God. Father, I thank you, Lord, that whoever is here with me right now, we can all stop and say, Lord, it's only because of you that we even have salvation, that we even have promises, that we have a Bible in our hands. And Lord, with everything going on, we need to stop right now and acknowledge you in all of our ways, just like your word says. Lord, we pray for our nation. Lord, our leaders need you. We have a new president. And they're making many decisions. And Lord, I'm afraid that many people in our government are exactly like us. Nobody's praying. Nobody's talking to God. We just talk to ourselves. And our little prayers are usually so short. And we don't really listen. Lord, I just can't help but feel that when we say to you, oh Lord, please be with America. Lord, how much time do we spend listening, hearing, and eager to know what you're thinking? Lord, do we even see prayer as a time that we might hear from you? Lord, we pray for our nation. We pray for our president. We pray for all the leaders our congressmen, our senators. Lord, we pray that somehow you will take them in your hands, guide their thoughts like channels of water in your hand. Lord, we would love to see our nation turn back to you. We would love to see revival break out. Lord, help us to know what you want us to do in the times that we live in. And Father, we want to pray for our church, for Walter Hill, even for the churches around us, Las Casas and Northside. Lord, we need your Holy Spirit. We need you to lead us, to direct us, to empower us. Lord, we need you to put burdens on our hearts for the things that you want. That, Lord, we won't be so busy living our lives 
that we forget there's that you were there watching over everything. Lord, help us not to take for granted that you have all the power and everything that we need and that, Lord, we will seek you earnestly. And, Father, as your son Jesus gave us such a beautiful picture, he often slipped away to pray. Lord, I pray that you'll lead us in our hearts to have those moments where we just stop and go to talk with you. Lord, we need you. And many of us, Lord, need to really make you more important in our lives. Father, we have people in our church that have been hurting. And what a joy it is to come before you with the people we love. Father, I pray for Wanda and William Rather. You know, Wanda lost her brother Ricky a few weeks ago. And then she and William came down with COVID. Somehow, through the funeral time together, and Lord, Wanda was in the hospital this last weekend. She's had it now for almost three weeks. Lord, I just pray that you'll be with Wanda and with William. Help them to get well, Lord. Father, I pray for my friend Robert Milliken, who's had COVID since the very first of January and still coughing and weak and tired. And Lord, he asks for prayer. Father, I pray that you'll bring healing to him and complete healing to his wife, Brenda, as well. Father, it was good to talk to Lois Wood and you know, Lord, she fell and broke her arm right at her wrist. Lord, I pray that things will go well for her to get her cast on this Friday and that she will be healed up, Lord. And Father, even right now as I'm talking, I imagine there's somebody listening who's thinking of somebody they're concerned about, maybe themselves. I pray right now, Lord, that you'll be with them and help them sense that you're there. And Lord, that they will respond to you in whichever way you're moving on their heart. And maybe somebody's listening who they're thinking, I really haven't spent the time I need to to stop from what I'm doing and to pray. So Lord, I pray that you'll just burden our hearts to spend more time talking to you about the things that are so important in our lives and in our nation. And Lord, pray that you'll be with Alva. Lord, you know she fell and we thought we were going to lose her. She got COVID and Missy and Bobby. And now the COVID is better, but Lord, Miss, uh, Alva fell, had a seizure. And Lord, she's having therapy. Nobody can go and see her. And Lord, I just pray that you'll be with her, her loneliness, her sense of being separated from her friends and her family. Father, if it be your will, make her strong. Bring her home again. Help Missy and Bobby have the strength they need to care for her. Lord, we're glad that Coy is better. Lord, I pray that you'll be with Nancy and Coy as they continue to improve their lives and get back to doing the things that they were doing before Coy had to have this surgery. And Lord, we're grateful the surgery, from what we know, has removed the cancer. And now make them well, Father, I pray. Thank you. Lord, for Tanya, they had surgery of removing cancer from her bladder. And how frustrated she was because she's worked so hard to try to be healthy. Yet God, to be faced with the cancer was so frustrating. And then to have to have a bleeding and things that went on and have to have a second surgery and all the complexities that can happen, Lord, you know that but we're grateful she's home. We're grateful, Lord, when I talk to her, she seems to be better. Lord, we pray that you'll just make her well and that the biopsy report she'll be getting, Lord, we pray there'll be good reports. Then, Father, we pray for Debbie. I love her. And Lord, you know the struggle she's had and the pain in her back and her leg and her foot and the frustration of just not being able to use her leg yet in her foot. Lord, I just pray that somehow you'll have 
help her to recover from the surgery and that, Lord, she'll be better than she's been in years. Thank you for all the wonderful people that have provided meals for us, have loved us, have encouraged us. Lord, I pray that you'll get glory from the way you are working, not just in Debbie's life, but in Tanya and Alva and Coy and Lois and Robert and Wanda and William. Lord, we pray for Mary Jo Rapetti as she waits still for the results of a biopsy that was determined to detect where she her cancer is in her body and how it's doing. And Lord, please be with her and the medical staff to get this done, Father. Lord, I pray for Cliff. Lord, what a precious man, what a faithful servant as a deacon he has been in our church for so many years. And Lord, today was a good day. It was so good to talk to him. And Evelyn, Lord, is she still recovering from her shoulder surgery? Lord, I pray that you'll be with this beautiful couple and help them, Father, and all those that wait on them and love them. Lord, we pray that you will give Cliff good days and Evelyn good days and strength to be able to be there. And for those that, Lord, can be around them and help them, Lord, bless them. And Father, for Tommy and Libby Sullivan, Lord, you know Tommy's infection in her his jaws and how they had to remove the dentures. And Lord, what a mess that was in the middle of finding a third area of cancer in his body and, and how that was just so many things going wrong at one time. And Lord, we're grateful he was at the doctor today and getting medication. And but Lord, I just pray that you'll help his mouth to heal up, that he can get some dentures again. And Lord, the cancer that they're dealing with, Lord, we pray for healing, for the medical staff to know what they're doing to help him. Lord, for Ted Chapman and Tommy Bond as they're dealing with the, the evidence of cancer in their body, but their numbers are good right now. Father, we just pray that you'll bless both these men, that they'll have good years to come. Father, for Shirley Leonard's cousin, Gwen, Lord, who's had numerous strokes and then having lost two sons and a grandson in the last three years, and now her daughter, Lynn, is having issues dealing with terminal liver failure. Be with those precious ones, Lord. Give them strength and comfort. Help them feel your love. And Lord, for Lisa Tomberlin's brother, Tracy, Lord, we pray for him. Father, he's got lung and brain cancer and living out his last days. Help Lisa have the words of comfort that her brother needs and all that she and WC are trying to do. Bless them and give them strength, Father, I pray. Lord, I pray for Glenda Cox, her stepmother, who's in Michigan waiting for stents to be put in. And she's already beginning to, and been having episodes. Help her, Lord, to just be able to be strong enough and to her body to be able to endure until she's able to get these stents. Be with Glenda and others in the family as they love her and care for her. Lord, we also pray for Polly Wilkerson's friend, Doug, Lord, he passed away and he's in glory now with you and a few weeks ago. But Lord, his wife, Helen, she's missing him. We join Polly, Lord, in praying for Helen that you'll just help her to have your love and your comfort as she misses her soulmate. And Father, we pray for Janet Smith's neighbor, Jackie, who lost her husband, Sam, to cancer just a few weeks ago after a long battle. Be with Janet, Lord, as she ministers to her friend, Jackie. And Lord, even so, we pray that you'll be with Janet because Lord, she's got in dealing with pains in her back and, and, and Lord, different parts of her body, Father. I pray that you'll help the doctors and Janet to find ways to relieve her pain that she can make it through these days that are just days of, of suffering. Lord, these are the ones that I could remember. And Lord, I know there's probably many more 
that I can't remember or that I'm not even aware of that perhaps somebody that's listening right now is aware of. And Lord Jesus, are these some of the things that you talked about when you would slip away to pray? Lord Jesus, were you out there praying for Peter and James and John? Were you praying for the people that you had healed that day? Were you praying for strength? Because Lord, you'd left the glories in heaven and you were walking on this earth. And I'm sure that as the Bible says, you are acquainted with our grief. I'm sure you were heartbroken to see all the brokenness in this world. But Lord, we want to tell you thank you. We want to tell you thank you for loving us. We want to thank you, tell you thank you for being our Emmanuel, God with us. Lord, you said that when your son was born, he will be called Emmanuel. And Lord Jesus, you are. You have walked the streets that we walk. You have felt the pain that we feel. And you have cared for the burdens that we carry. And Lord, I want to tell you thank you. And I want to tell you it's so good to be able to take time to slip away from all the busy things in this world and to say, Lord, we love you. Thank you for loving us. Thank you for wanting to have an intimate love relationship with us. And Jesus, help us always to remember your word, your pleading, your instructions. When you said, abide in me, that this time of prayer, oh Lord, is a time that we could get close to you. Is a time, Lord Jesus and Father and Holy Spirit, that we could be intimate with you and to know that the greatest thing we need is even more than the answers to our prayers. We need you, O oh Lord. We need to be near you, close to you, and we need to be empowered by you. Please forgive us of our sins. And Lord Jesus, thank you for suffering and taking the penalty that was due to us, that we could live every day walking brand new in your mercies. You know our weaknesses, Father. Please help us to always look to you for strength, direction, and just simply for the love that you fill us with, that we might be able to be who we need to be to our friends and our family and those around us. Thank you, Father, for this time of prayer. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Well, you know, uh, this has been good. I'm glad you joined me. And I hope that this has perhaps maybe helped you in your prayer life. I can say this, probably the most spiritual thing any of us could do is to pray. And it's probably the most neglected thing that we do. So let me encourage you. Think about that. Spend time talking to God. When you feel that tug in your heart, let me encourage you. Stop what you're doing. Talk to God. It doesn't have to be but just a minute or two. But if we are going to change this nation and hear what I'm saying, if we are going to change this nation, it's not going to be us, but it's going to be God in us. It's going to be Jesus in us. And the only way you get filled with Jesus is when you get before God in prayer and, of course, the study of his word. Don't neglect seeking to be with God. And remember the comment about Jesus, Luke 5, 16, but he himself would often 
slip away to the wilderness to pray. God bless. I hope you have a good evening.